Good evening guys, hope you guys are well. We're going to get started really, really soon. We're going to wait for Dwayne to hop on. And um, once he's on, I'm just going to make him a broadcaster. And then we can get rolling. So welcome to everybody who's on this Facebook Live. I see Dwayne is ready. I'm just going to add him as a guest quick. For those of you guys who have just hopped on, what you can do in the meantime is to hit that like button, share this with a couple of friends. This is going to be a fantastic evening. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to learn a lot from Dwayne. And um, yeah, it's going to be really, really insightful. So get your questions ready as well. For those of you guys who have hopped on, this is your opportunity to ask Dwayne basically anything that you want, except when it comes to politics. And uh, a couple of other things. So let's keep it clean. Let's keep it real. Dwayne, welcome to another episode of Inside Greatness, my man. Thanks for joining us again. It's awesome to have you back. Like a gazer. Um, hope you can hear me. Hope everything is okay. So um, I'm not used to this uh, Facebook stuff, but uh, hopefully I got everything sorted. Loud and clear, brother. You got your cup of coffee. Cheers on that. Mm. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> Sunday. All the way from France. What was that? Bonjour. I oh, know, Santa is just cheers in uh, French. <laughs> cheers in French. Sacre yep. bleu. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, Dwayne. So, guys, once again, for those of you guys who have hopped on, um, I'm going to make this announcement regularly. But you can basically shoot Dwayne with a few questions, anything that you want. Um, keep it clean, keep it real, no politics. But this is really an opportunity for you guys to engage with Dwayne. Um, that's the reason why we birthed the Inside Greatness series is to bring you a real authentic perspective of what matters most to some of the most successful people and most influential people in our country as well as internationally. Um, so we're going to keep it real tonight. Dwayne, obviously you've just got back from injury. You played your first 30 minutes as you told me this afternoon. Um, tell us a bit on how, how that went. Yeah, it was... Uh... Pretty tough, um, I must say. I uh, didn't really think I, that I would play well this quick. Um, still feels a little bit uncomfortable um, uh, on the pelvic area, but um, yeah, it's uh, first ten minutes was was awesome, and then after that, um, I really needed uh, needed some extra lungs out there. But um, yeah, it was a it was a nice day. Uh, Three o'clock afternoon match and uh, twenty nine degrees in in the south of France in. Uh, in the start of winter, so it, uh, what a beautiful day to to run out and um, be a part of uh, be a part of the squad again. Um, but yeah, everything went uh, went, went well, and um, I must say, yeah, pretty pretty happy with the outcome. So hopefully, we could just uh, move on from there. That's awesome. And um, you also mentioned to me this afternoon that you got you got bounced. Um, <laughs> maybe would you want to elaborate on that because that's kind of unheard of. Like I said this afternoon, the last guy who bounced you was, was myself back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, yes, I, I haven't made any tackles in, in four months. So um, the, first, the first opportunity I had was, um, was this big center weighing 120 kgs. And I uh, thought, yes, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to smash this guy. But uh, uh, instead of smashing him, I was just a, a little speed bump. Uh, so... He went straight <laughs> over me, and uh, and I knew, yes, yeah, I, I need some extra work um, in that department. But uh, you know, hopefully, with uh, with a bit of time, uh, everything will pick up, and I'll be I'll be happy and and you know, back to my best. Fantastic, Dwayne. I think let's get into some questions. I've got some questions lined up here um, from a few people who are part of the Inside Greatness community <laughs> and our newsletter. Um, so, the first thing that we want to know is. What was the hardest thing for you to overcome during this period when you were injured? Oh, um, I think I think the one thing was not being able to take part in 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 something you love. Um, uh, you know, everyone's everyone's got a passion. My passion is uh, to play sport and uh, to comp contribute to to a team sport. Otherwise, I could have gone and played chess or something like that. But um, <laughs> yeah, it was difficult to sit on the sidelines, see the guys going uh, through ups and downs. Um, and 
you know, sometimes you you, you want to be a part of 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 all of that. Um, uh, you want to, you really want to um, experience all of it. Uh, but yeah, I, I it was kind of difficult. Um, but you know, sometimes your body body tells you you need rest. Um, you need uh, you need something to to get to focus on focus on something specific um just get your mind and everything in the in the in, in the right line focusing on what you want to do and where you want to go again um so this is a this was a little bit of a, a quiet time um maybe reevaluate um where you are in your life and um give a start 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 a new focus from there but um yeah it's been it's been tough it's been a been a big grind but um yeah just uh I think happy to to be back and uh, and doing what I love. Just on that, Dwayne, you mentioned focusing. It gives you time to focus on other things. Um, that's something that definitely I feel, you know, when I still had a career in rugby, was kind of an advantage during times of injuries to express yourself in something else. So um, I know that you have recently started a biltong business or you're looking at starting it up in France. Um, I know that you also... Farming on the side, you've got your cattle, um, which you're very passionate about. So, are those some of the things that you sort of focused on over these past, um, you know, four or five months? Yeah, we actually had a had a lot of time off now. So the, the four months really, really made you think. And um, yeah, I had I had a lot, or had a lot to a lot to do outside of rugby. Then um, I could. Uh, well, go in in the morning, do my fitness, do my training, do the rehab, and then the whole afternoon you've got off. And uh, what do you do? You can't really sit at home in France on your own. Um, the, the family is back in SA, so it it it, it opened up uh, something different. And I thought, ah, yes, uh, I'm gonna make myself some some boltong, some drovos, uh, and some burovos and stuff like that. And um, you know. When I came back and started opening my packet, the guys asked, "Where, where did you get it?" And uh, I said, "Listen, we, we, um, I'm, I'm making it just for myself, so it's, it's not really a big thing." And some of the guys tasted it, and they really asked, uh, "Can they have some?" So myself and uh, Jean-Ré Kruger um, sat down and had a good chat, and said, "Listen, let's, let's see if the." If the guys in the team wanted um, a little bit more, so we ordered uh, 200 kgs of meat and um, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> started working it in the butchery and uh, do all the cuts and do everything. And uh, we had we had spices, and um, I think that you know all of that meat sold within the first week, um, just just within the in the group within the club with all the players and and so on. So. After that, we thought, listen, we we're really gonna gonna see we how, how far we can take this. And um, so, genre is uh, is pretty much fluent in French, and um, he hooked us up with uh, with some of the butcheries and uh, some ma- major major butcheries in in Toulon, and uh, we had a good chat and see um, who will be able to help us and assist us with a with a spot and space and. And 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 all of that stuff. So um, yeah, we got got to a spot, and uh, the guys are pretty pumped and keen to to um, to, to sell the stuff. And uh, hopefully, we can we can we can grow a big business from there. So it's just uh, starting up. Um, we've got the spots. Uh, next week is our is our test run um, within the within the little butchery. And um, yeah, hopefully. Within the next month or two, we'll we'll make our, our our major launch. So we're just testing the waters first uh, outside of uh, outside of the the rugby community and uh, see if the people out there would would really love and uh, and, and and buy the product. You guys uh, obviously have excluded Brian Abana. It seems is there a specific reason <laughs> why you've left out Brian in this entrepreneurial venture? 
Yeah, uh, uh, nothing specific. Um, <laughs> you know, he's uh, he's also a busy guy. He's got he's got a lot of a uh, lot of stuff uh, to do, and uh, I think he's also busy studying again. Um, he's doing yeah, a course through um, through Toulouse Business School or something like that. So there's a couple of guys that's also doing that, and uh, you know, you you got to do something extra. Uh, <laughs> rugby isn't going to take you. Um, you know, gonna be there for your for your whole life, your whole career. So it was sometimes you, you need a change, and uh, and this venture we on is is gonna stop at some point. So um, yeah, he's he's pretty much busy, and you know he's um, he also live quite far away from us. So it's 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 just simple and it's easy. And myself and John Ray has has got the same outlook on, on on some of the stuff we we do. So it's uh, yeah, it's a it's a win win situation for us. Sounds good, Dwayne. That's a pretty good excuse. I'll hand it to you. But um, <laughs> uh, th- it's something cool that you mentioned. Obviously, our group and in our business, we've got a big thing around part-time, you know, and the value of doing something part-time. So um, I want to chat a bit more about your, your farming business that you've obviously been grinding at for a while. It's a big passion of yours. I know mm-hmm. that um, we've had a few conversations evolve around that. So tell us a bit more about it. Um, and how you started out, why you started out, and you know your prospects looking forward. Is that something that you'll possibly do once you're retired? Yes, most definitely. Um, yo, uh, well, I grew up on a farm, so uh, I've always had that passion of, of, of doing what I love. And uh, well, in a way, I'm, I'm, I'm actually... Well, I'm, I'm one of the lucky ones. I, I play rugby, which I always loved my whole life, and uh, and I farm on the side, which uh, I've I've grown up with. So um, yeah, it's 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 in my blood. It's it's something uh, I got from my dad and my parents, and uh, they really taught taught us a lot um, throughout the years. And you know, after my dad passed, uh, you know, sometimes you. you you fall short of, of some of the stuff, but luckily there's some, there's some amazing people out there that's, that's really, um, capable of helping you and, uh, just, uh, well, not, not just financially, but just, just telling you about what you need to do and what's the next step, uh, going forward. So, um, I met up with uh, with a good mate in, a, in, in the free state and, uh, we had a good chat about, um how um how his business is going and i thought yes yeah i, I kind of like this um i'm I, I i just started out with uh with the cattle on the side and uh never really focused as much um as i do now on it and um you know he helped me a bit and um yeah from there on it it really took off uh it's really busy um Bought a bought two new tractors uh, just three weeks ago, so it's yeah, it's a it's a big job, also a financial draining job. Um, but you know, if 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 you've got a passion for it, yes, you why or why stop? So you got to keep keep grinding, keep grinding. So what are those tractors that you bought, John Deere New Holland? Which no, one of John, those Deere, two? John Deere, John, John Deere, Deere, of course. So yes. typical. I can't believe it. You got to get into the New Holland, brother. Come on, man. No, I'll hook no. you up with a couple of contacts. We can sort you out. Oh, we can. We can always <laughs> things, we can things always. will undoubtedly go better on the farm automatically once you have that baby running out there in in, in the fields. <laughs> we'll see. And then, <laughs> and then, what is what is your preferred um, your preferred breed of cattle? Are you um, do you have a specific breed that you enjoy? Yeah. So we. Uh, so we're not going stoot. Um, we we just going with the same breed, but um, we we we're only going in in, in Boerfelder, and um, it's a it's a easy it's an easy cow to work with. Um, you know, we've got a got a lot of space, and they and, and they really they really adapted very well to that. Um, to that area, so yeah, we we're happy with um, the outcome and the and the calf rate is also pretty good. So yeah, we 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 couldn't be happier with that. That's awesome, man. I see uh, Derek van Grien, and I don't I'm not sure if you know Derek, but he's asked what's in the mug. 
<laughs> it's a secret, Derek. Uh, it's a secret. You don't want to know. It's actually just a cappuccino, so I, I can I can show you. Just uh, give me give me one second. You know, a, a cappuccino and and a bottle of cappuccino, they look pretty much the same. <laughs> well, it's a South African brand, so I brought a um, a couple of packets with me, and um, so this is this is it. Oh, come uh, on, just man. instant, instant cappuccino, but yeah, you know, the good. coffee over here, coffee over here is, is not really great. So I'm, I'm going with this. <laughs> you can just ask, is that, is that Thor juice? <laughs> uh, I would have loved to, would have loved to, um, to say yes, but, uh, <laughs> uh, we'll stick with cappuccino. There we go. Um, Dwayne, another question yeah, that came through actually quite frequently <clears throat> is around your, future endeavors in terms of your rugby career a lot of people wanted to know if you'd ever consider coming back and playing in south africa yeah you know um it's it's a difficult one um i would i would love to play in south africa i would love to play for south africa again um i would love to be selected and i play for the box run out and um be a part of something special but you know at the moment i'm i'm over here i'm trying to get back into into the swing of things um i played with a with a hell of a lot of injuries over the past couple of years and uh, i think at a stage my body just said listen look, I, I can't can't function anymore so um i took this four months off and uh, really focused on what to, um, to fix and uh, to get back to 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 100 so yeah i i'd love to play to play in south africa again I think with all the with all the stuff um, politics going on in sport, um, it's it it makes it kind of difficult. Um, but we'd love to make a change. So, um, and I'd also love to be a part of that change. But you know, at, at the moment, uh, you gotta you gotta take care of your family. Um, you know, if if. If I was ten years younger, I wouldn't have wouldn't have made this move. Um, yeah, that makes you know, sense. At the moment, you, you you need to you need to take all everything in consideration and um, you know think about what what your plans after rugby and uh, you you know you need to need to really focus on that. Um, not not saying that I'm done. Um, I've got a couple of years uh, still to go under this belt, and uh, hopefully, I can I can come back to 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 being the best uh, that I've been um, a couple of years back. So, yeah, we'll we'll see. Um, there's a there's a lot of things changing in SA rugby. Um, I know Rossi Rasmus is also coming back. I've uh, I've worked with him for many years, and. Um, I'm really fond of him as a as a coach, as a manager, and um, so we'll we'll see. We, you you never know what what happens. Yeah, that's cool. I see a couple of questions coming through at the speed of light. I'm trying to stay um, trying to stay on it. Somebody asked why I stopped playing purely because of injury. Um, I had my seventh, well, we are my eighth knee operation probably a year ago, so I was kind of forced to mm. um, kick the can. A lot of guys have been asking. I think I, took part, I, yeah? I think I took part in one of the injuries. Right? You I did. That was, <laughs> was, was so hectic. I was, I was uh, yeah, at Newlands, I think. Yeah, 2011, I think it was. And mm. um, running towards a ruck and you came swinging out. And obviously, you got these massive thighs. I tried to jump over the ruck. You caught my <laughs> knee. Basically, that's where it started for me, Dwayne. You, uh, I think yes. you, the, you played the biggest role in ending my career. Um, oh, Thanks, Gary. But I mean, we'll sort it out. We'll sort it out when I see you face to face. We'll be nice now. <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. Nah, that's just life. Eh? Life goes on. Um, yeah, guys are hopping on now. Guys from Standerton, Renick, welcome, man. Um, welcome to all of you guys who have hopped on. I see a, quite a few people on the live call. Ask Dwayne your questions. Get them ready. Dwayne, a lot of people wanted to know if you wore black on Monday. Let's not get into politics. Okay, let's not get into politics. You can just answer yes or no. Maybe share a little bit of your, of your feel. Give us some hope for South Africa, brother. Um, yes, I. Uh, um, if you follow me on, uh, on 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 Twitter or Instagram, I uh, I don't really 
they don't really post anything of um, of the Black Monday, but uh, I did I did um, wear the clothes, and um, you know it's it's just all in support to to the farmers, as as we are we are also farmers, and uh, you know you wanna you wanna support your um, your fellow farmer out there. So yeah. Um, it's just it's it's tough times in South Africa, but you know, uh, just a small steps will make a massive change. So I think, I think um, for for us, just standing together and just showing that we care and uh, we can make a difference that 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 really speaks massively um, towards the community out there. So and towards the world. So. You know that's that's just you want to be part of uh, part of something and uh, but you want to be part of the right thing. So uh, I think uh, this is just this is just supporting your your fellow farmer. Fantastic, JP. I see. Um, oh, sorry, Dwayne. I see JP's got a question for you. I think it's a pretty relevant question. He wants to know what do you attribute your success to? It's probably quite a broad question, but maybe go into that. Um, and when I uh, success is obviously subjective as well. I yeah. reckon, but I mean, but to me, like you've always been. You've always been so grounded. Apart from the fact that you've played 89 games for the Stormers, you've played about 37 games for the Springboks, um, you've always been a legitimate, cool dude. You've always had time for people, um, anybody from all walks of life. That's how I've known you. You were one of the first guys who really let me in when I was a junior at the Stormers. Um, so, I mean, let's, let's chat about your success. Let's chat about your mindset. What's been some of the main contributing factors? Yeah, like you said, success is a is a really broad thing. Um, you know, I, I everyone everyone wants to strive for success. Um, you know, I, I don't I don't really think um, that that I'm there yet. Um, there's there's a lot of stuff that that you real uh, that you that you still want to achieve. And um, but I think uh, thinking back on 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 some of the stuff is. Is also being being part of something, something great. Being part of great teams. Being, uh, um, yeah, being part of something something special that 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 gave you that opportunity to 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 be successful, to thrive in that in that uh, in that situation. And um, you know, I'm uh, as I'm. Pretty happy in uh, in the way I approached uh, the game, uh, rugby, and um, you know, outside of rugby, it's it all comes down to to family and your values and how you how you've been brought up. Uh, like like I said, growing up on a farm, uh, you you didn't have had much, but you know, you had your family and. Um, that was that was that was the most important thing at that time. Uh, everyone everyone chips in, everyone works, everyone gets up at five o'clock in the morning or whatever, and uh, you do your bit. And uh, I think the most, mo- yo, or, or, I think most of it was was the thing that that my parents told me: you got to work hard, you got to work hard to. Earn.